Welcome to Market Movers. I'm Jim Urio with Scott and Mark. Hi, Jim. Okay, so we have non-farm on Friday. Essentially, since April or May, expectations for this number has, has been going down considerably. Is this the one particular read on it that's going to bolster the recession talk? Well, this is the one particular read, Jim, that I think basically ends up being maybe the trap in the sense of the Federal Reserve has a meeting this week that's very big going into a non-farm payroll number, which to your point has a big weight on it, in my opinion. So if the Fed sometimes or somehow, let's say, slips up here and gives the wrong policy guidance, that's where I think the big number lies. Will they? Is the Fed going to come to the rescue? <laughs> well, Jim, here's what they've been doing. I think they have been coming to the rescue in the sense that if you notice, the Fed has been a lot more data dependent going forward in, in their talks. So to me, a weak number, though, after, say, maybe no cut, that could be a problem. That could be a problem, right. Now, before we dive into our trade discussion, I'd like to point out that these are examples, not recommendations or advice. When we price these up, the S&P E-mini contract was trading about 30, 35, Scott. Jim, 30, 35. How about it? They, they call that a breakout, I believe, yes, in technical trading land. So yeah. a lot to kind of be excited about ahead of, though, as you point out, some of the kind of maybe trippy economic data ahead, you know, with respect to what could happen to trip this market up. So there's some interesting things out there I found as an example that I'd like to share with you, my friend, as an example, specifically, Jim, looking at buying the week one Wednesday, my my friend, 3050, 3075 call spread in the ES for eight ticks. But Jim, I don't want to pay for this. So what I'm going to do is actually sell a put in the ES with the same expiration for, you guessed it, Jim, very good, eight ticks. So this trade risks me getting long if I get put two at 3,000 with my max reward at 1250. The trade expires on November 6th, as I said. So it goes through the Fed meeting. It goes through the non-farm payrolls report. Any fallout after that, as you mentioned, the underlying at 3035, I like that expression. I especially like, if I may say, that line in the sand at 3,000 on the ES anyway, if I were to get long there then I'd have to deal with that. I like this trade. I can't say that I don't. There is a risk. Being long at 3,000 is a real risk. We take risks. The more important thing is that we understand them. If you understand being long there at 3,000 is the risk, then I think it's a great and trade. And I still get a way I to express myself on the breakout, right. too, by having the call I spread on, too. I personally am a little less risky than you. You know I would have probably sold a put <laughs> spread on this. Seriously, right? But selling a put, I think, is a perfectly legitimate way. Now, I'm, I'm looking at it from the long end as well, as I have been for the last, it seems like, couple of years. Right. So I'm buying the Dece micro at 3030 with a target of 3100 on the same uh, on the upside which essentially I'm saying similar things to what you are and a stop placed below 2990 it risks 200 to make 350. But if we start running to the upside, it might be the kind of thing where you raise your stop and move back your take profit. Thoughts? I dig it. Uh, very symmetric, 30-30. That's a nice, easy number to remember. You mentioned your stop out there. Again, back near my levels as well on the downside where I don't believe the market's going to trade lower than that or at least stay down there. So my opinion, look, the expression here is yes, definitely bullish and definitely different steps to take on how to get bullish and how to take advantage of this rally. Quick, I know just an opinion here, but you think the number's going to be a beat with these watered down expectations? I don't actually and that's why I'm a little bit concerned about what the Fed messaging is going to be but if they stay on message and stay on that data dependency a weak number doesn't hurt the market as much as it may used to thank you for joining us on market movers I'm Jim Urio where we are helping to make you a better trader